geldiniz. Umarım iyisinizdir. Bugün karşınızda benim biricik sevgili koordinatörüm Anastasia var. Anastasia ile koordinatörlük hakkında konuşacağız bugün. E, e, tabii ki de İngilizce olacak bu görüşmemiz ve e, bunu vakit darlığından dolayı sadece İngilizce bırakacağım. Ve sizlerden küçük ricamı tekrar dile getiriyorum. Destekleriniz için kanalım, kanalıma abone olabilirsiniz. If you want to support me, you can subscribe on my channel and we can start. Hello, Anastasia. Hello, Yasemin. <laughs> How are you? I'm so worried. It's my first interview. Really? In English. No. I'm happy to have it. So, first of all, uh, can we know about you a little bit more? Like, can you introduce yourself? Uh, yes. Where should I look? Feel okay. free. Uh, first of all, I'm Anastasia. I'm 25 years old. I'm AC coordinator, and I'm doing this because I was in my own AC project, and uh, it inspired me. And I won't do it in my country, and I have opportunity. And this Yasemin and uh, other Turkish guys, my first project, and I'm proud of. It yes, it's a bit about myself. We are really happy to have her. Like uh, I'm always repeating, I'm gonna repeat one more time for my channel. She is the best coordinator ever. You can see. Okay, let's continue. What is being coordinator in ESC project? Uh, first of all, you should be a mother and father. I think uh, you should think always about your volunteers mm -hmm. and if they have a problem like different kind of problem you should help them with everything with uh, accommodation activity it's very important and you should like most the most important stuff it's about activity about project uh, you should organize their time well to be them to be uh, happy productive and Yes. Thank you so much. Kısaca bahsedeceğim. O da gerekli gördüğüm noktaları. Genel anlamda bize her konuda yardımcı oluyorlar. Ee, ve e, her türlü imkanı sağlıyorlar. İşte kalma yeri olsun, işte eğitim vesaire yapılan aktiviteler olsun. E, tam olarak ondan bahsetti. Ve bu bizim işimizi kolaylaştırıcı. İşte hani schedule, haftalık programımızı e, daha işlevsel hale getirici şeyler. Ve bunun için onlara minnettarız tabii ki de. Let me continue. Nice. How is the process to be coordinator in ESC project? And uh, thank you so much. Be quiet, please. <laughs> okay. Uh, you mean how I feel, like what or which, what is my task? I mean, how did you decide to be ESC like coordinator, and how was the progress? Like, how mm -hmm. was the process? Um, you can see that I'm speak English not very well in a professional way um, because, because I didn't learn English uh, at my school mm -hmm. and when I start when I started to participate in Erasmus plus programs uh -huh. uh, I met people from different country for with different culture uh, with uh, different languages and a lot of things and I fell in love in this type of life and I started to participate and after I decided to go to my own AC project it was in Greece and it was the best experience which I ever had and uh, I saw how how it's going like for, for a team how they are doing this how it's important for them and I did, uh, they asked me to stay in Greece for uh, be a coordinator for for volunteer in Greece and I said, if uh, I will develop these programs uh, in different country, who will do it in Russia? And I decided to come back and do it in my local community because uh, it's important. Russia is not a very popular country for AC and I want to change this. And I'm working on it a lot and I'm trying to learn something, to talk with people, I have my English classes uh, and I'm happy to do this. Congratulations, first of all. You, she is, like, you can't imagine she is giving too much effort, even like she has 
uh, us, I mean like ESC volunteers and she is also uh, running other projects for local community and like she's taking care of a lot of things actually. That's why like uh, she's important for Russia, please take care about her. <laughs> okay, so uh, would you like to say something for your, I mean Greece project or Greek people? Uh, Yes, uh, yes, us. <laughs> it was nice. I love Greek people. Uh, I was in Athens. It was nice. Everyone spoke English, uh, and I think that they had my the biggest character development there. I met. I I not met. I lived with different people from different countries, and I didn't have Russian people near me, and it was nice to learn something new. And I want to say that when you are living in other country and when you are repre represent your country, you appreciate more your country than before. If you understand what I mean, yes. like it's different. And I can see like you're missing your food, your culture, your dance. And I, I did like I like Turkey before, but now I want to say that. I love this country because I know your culture from you, not from television or YouTube, uh, from people. Yes, it's the important part. I think th uh, for those kind of projects, you meet like amazing people uh, and you have those kind of people in your life and it makes you such an explorer, let's say. Okay. Evet. Evet. What kind of task do you have uh, as a coordinator? Uh, every morning, uh, every Monday, I should uh, organize a schedule mm -hmm. for volunteers. But before project, I should decide where you will go, what you will do, uh, what can we give you, and what you want to catch, take from this project. Uh, yes, and uh, every Monday you should do schedule. Uh, you should. Uh, <laughs> you should uh, be be in your phone always mm -hmm. to like uh, make support if they need it uh, and spend time with uh, volunteers and give them opportunity to meet new people it's very important as well I was telling that uh, I want you to uh, have more more Russian people like more new friends or uh, to be like more, more deeply in local community. I don't know. Maybe now I cannot describe everything. Uh, yes, but uh, it, it's a lot, and you should feel your uh, volunteers as well. So, so uh, as she told you, like uh, it's important to have local experiences when you are in abroad and. Uh, she provides a lot of things and it's important to like uh, share your private life and she also share like her mom her like uh, friends with us it's really important to have it and thank you so much we appreciate it for this situation and let's pass another question uh, what is your motivation to be coordinator in ESC program uh, my motivation it's intercultural dialogue of course and uh, my motivation is to give uh, people opportunity to know about this kind of programs i mean and russian people who came for our events and who met you and who changed their opinion about people from different country and for you like to give you opportunity to live Russian life for a bit or two months. Uh, I would say like changing and trying new stuff. Yes. Yeah. That. <laughs> <laughs> I know I can uh, talk about it a lot, but when I should uh, answer like shortly, it's impossible. For, for me, I cannot describe this in with words. You should uh, understand my feeling try to do it please for me it's very important to experience that and uh, she has one like inspired words 
aspire to inspire. To inspire. Yeah, it's, uh, it's when you have inspiration and you want to give this inspiration to other people. And it's like absolutely this example. I ha I had it and now I I try to give it give give it give it to give other people. That Congratulations, Anastasia! We Thank love you, Anastasia. Can you give some information about Falco Group and your like camps about most? Yes, we um, have uh, two organizations. Uh, this organization, Falco Group, um, they are working a lot with inter intercultural projects, international. Uh, with, like my organization did uh, a lot of projects. Uh, I was as a mentor before, as a like one person in uh, in this team I wasn't coordinator before mm -hmm. but uh, we had a lot of volunteers and from Turkey and from Italy uh, and we doing a camp summer camp for kids it's international camp for Russian kids but uh, our kids have uh, Russian kid leaders and international like kid leaders from different country and it's a good opportunity to break with some stereotypes uh, to start speak English not because of you learning something from books mm -hmm. because you're talking with your friends with your kid leader with the teachers and we are doing a lot of uh, events about cultures about flags about about world like the main idea that we have uh, all world in one camp and we can do whatever we want and learn a lot. Learning by doing that there is non education. <laughs> yeah right non-formal education. And it's the important for uh, future volunteers or students who are thinking too much about these projects. How can you choose your volunteers? Like what are your criteria? Uh, we are working with our partners from different countries and mm -hmm. when we have like approved project like normally they are choosing uh, volunteers because uh, it's their organization they are know who wants to go abroad uh, if someone uh, if I have uh, like a mail from someone mm -hmm. I can tell them you can come go to your to sending organization and ask them like do you have do they have a space or not like I don't choose volunteers now maybe later I will do it my partners help me with this sending organization but is important uh, very important uh -huh. yes we are working together like we always have a contact because some some sometimes like if for example you cannot tell me something you're shy or you don't want to hit me or something uh, you can say this to Chuba and she will message me or call me and we will decide like for me it's important stuff but I think that for AC volunteers the biggest uh, thing is not what only one thing is motivation mm -hmm. that's it not English not your like previous competencies not your university and stuff just your motivation if you want to do it like that's all you can be participant so as I told you before, uh, like it's important to have standing organization in your country and you should have one as always to apply those kind of projects. So uh, what, what kind of tasks do you have for your volunteers? You can just give uh, some examples. They're uh, doing activity in local organizations. Uh, These uh, some theaters, theatrical schools, uh, they are working with kids with disabilities because we have like a lot of these kind of organizations. They are doing office work. They are uh, having uh, Turkish classes, uh, lang Turkish language classes for us. They are learning learning Russian. Uh, they are doing some um, how to say social media works to make visibility of our project, and it's amazing because people from all the world can see your work now it's very important and they are doing everything what i ask them like if i will ask can we make one tiktok video now yes of course can we go 
there and to peace. Yes, we can. Like I never hear no from you, and it's, I appreciate it. And uh, yes, what? And they are doing their own events. I like it. Uh, these speaking clubs. It's non-formal activity, and it's always beautiful mm -hmm. because, like in Krasnodar, it's not very popular uh -huh. this kind, this format of events, and it's amazing. And you should see uh, and read about Russian, Russian, Turkish, and their cultural night. It was amazing. I will share with you guys. <laughs> yes. Let's wait. So, how is Russia situation for those kind of projects? So, for example, uh, I heard that like the uh, like many countries has national agency, but Russia doesn't have. So, how it works for Russia? Uh, yes. Unfortunately, we don't have national agency, but we have big uh, resource center CITO. They help us with some like educational uh, programs, training courses, uh, like we are feeling their support. And uh, normally we are applying with our partners, like we can, I can write this project and apply to your national agency with uh, your sending organization. I should find partners from different countries. We are doing like this, it's working, but we hope we have like several uh, hosting and sending organizations here in Russia, but it's not a lot. Uh, in Krasnodar we have only two, only three, and like I know all of them, and maybe some more in different cities, uh, and we are working together, and we want to like, develop this uh, program in Russian. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we will. <laughs> when we will have national agency, I will call you. Okay. And we will work celebrate this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> How do you provide motivations for your volunteers? Uh, for your volunteers? You mean uh, how I how you make us happy to motivate for our task. Ah, actually Anastasia is enough, uh, Evelina is as well. So they are enough to be motivated, but I want to hear her answer. Uh, I think that important to tell thank you for your work, even if it's uh, like something not huge, to be thankful for volunteers because they are coming here not for not for doing my work. I I will do it by myself. It's for them, like for me. This kind of activity for you first of all, and after for our organization, for our community. And uh, I think you're motivate yourself like without me because you're a great team. And I hope like next volunteers uh, will be like this, but I'm not sure, we will see. Um, a reflection form, when you are dis discussing everything, mm -hmm. you can feel that, like, for example here, you can change something, mm -hmm. or uh, add something, or do less, that, that is it enough? <laughs> I don't know that, but and I don't think about this question. Okay. The last question is coming. What are your observations about your Turkish volunteers? <laughs> I love them more than I love someone. Because <laughs> I like this. That's it. Uh, you know, when your kids lead at another profession, you don't For example, when your kids leader and when you have your first group, mm -hmm. you will never forget. Never. Uh, I remember all my kids from my first group, and it's same. Like uh, your first. Uh, now I can speak English every day. It wasn't like this before, and it's nice. And I love your souls. Uh, your and I love that you're like so thankful for this project, and you're happy. For me, it's very important. And I cannot how I can live this life without you. <laughs> Maybe I should move to your cities and country. Yes, I'm looking for that. <laughs> Thank you for your for this project. It was great time for me. Thank you for this interview.
for being nice, kind, for everything. Let's go hungry first. <laughs> it's our last part uh, tradition. So thank you for watching. Uh, Subscribe to your YouTube channel, please. Yes, please. And I appreciate for all of things for Anastasia, Evelina, Polka Group, and Igor, Vika, Victoria, and my flatmates, other volunteers, Brock and Ali. See you for next video and thank you so much. Paka paka! Gulli gulli!